Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with kimchi corned beef. That's right, cabbage is to kimchi as a paper airplane is to a jet fighter, which is why I've always wanted to try a corned beef and cabbage recipe using kimchi instead. So that's what's behind this experiment. And not to spoil the ending, but this really did work out quite well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the two stars of our show. And those would be some kimchi. And here I have two 16 ounce jars of the finest local stuff I could find, as well as one ready to cook corned beef, which by the way are usually made from brisket, but this time I decided to try one made from beef round, which is a lot leaner. So I was a little nervous, but it worked out. And we'll review that a little more later. For now, let's get this started by placing one of our jars of kimchi at the bottom of this pot, which apparently I'm not gonna be able to do without the help of a fork. And I'm not sure if you're gonna have a choice, but if you do, I would choose the kimchi that comes with the largest pieces of cabbage possible. But having said that, I'm pretty sure any kimchi you find is going to work. And then what we'll do is go ahead and unwrap our corned beef and place that over our kimchi. And since this was an experiment, I kind of debated whether I should remove that spice blend from the surface. On one hand, I thought it would taste good. But on the other hand, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be biting into that stuff while I was eating. But anyway, ultimately, I decided to leave it on, which probably was the right choice. But either way, what we'll do is go ahead and put that second jar of kimchi over the top. And then besides our beef and fermented cabbage, I knew I also had to add a little bit of liquid. So I rinsed out that second jar with about a half a cup of water and dumped that in. And yes, I should have rinsed out both jars with a quarter cup of water. So you got me. But anyway, the point is we're going to add some water and then head to the stove, where we will cover this and bring it up to a simmer over high heat. And I realize, especially compared to a traditional boiled corned beef, I really didn't add much liquid here, but that was basically my strategy. To keep the intensity of all the flavors, I wanted to use the minimum amount of liquid possible. But anyway, like I said, we'll go ahead and bring this up to a simmer on high, at which point we'll go ahead and back the heat down to low. And then what we'll do is cook this covered for about two to three hours or until fork tender. And what we should probably do at about the one hour mark is uncover it and we'll take a peek and see how everything's going. But also because we are using a small amount of liquid, we do want to flip this over. And please be very careful doing this. All right, it's not like there's a lot of dangerously hot liquids we want splashed in our face, but I would especially try to avoid scalding hot kimchi juice, as that would be an especially nasty experience. So I used a fork and tongs and turned it over without any major incident. And then what we'll do after draping some kimchi back over the top is go ahead and cover this again and let it continue to cook on low for another hour. At which point, yes, you guessed it, we're gonna uncover and evaluate. And while I could feel with my fork that this was starting to get tender, it didn't seem like it had gone quite far enough. So I decided to flip it over and give it another 30 minutes or so. And by the way, testing a piece of round for doneness is a little bit different than testing brisket. So on the blog post, I'm going to give you some tips for how you can tell when yours is done. So I redraped that, covered it, and let it cook for another half hour, at which point I determined it had cooked long enough. And it probably doesn't look that much different on screen from the other times we tested but I can definitely feel those tines going in with less effort. And once we do reach that point, what we want to do is remove that corned beef from the pot into a bowl, where we'll reserve that while we go ahead and cook our traditional corned beef and cabbage vegetables. And I guess if you want, you could cover that with foil to keep it warm. But since we're going to warm this back up in the broth once the veggies are done, I would just go ahead and save the foil. But anyway, what we'll do is crank our heat back up to high and bring this up to a simmer, at which point we can go ahead and add our potatoes, celery, and carrots and or any other veggies of your choice. And I'm gonna go ahead and distribute those and poke those down as best I can. And of course, if you think you need some water, go ahead and add some. But don't forget, veggies give up water as they cook. And then all we have to do is cover this, reduce our heat to medium low, and cook these veggies until they're just about tender. And I say just about because we're gonna to wanna to put our meat back in here and warm it up for about 15 minutes. So we don't wanna cook our veggies until they start to fall apart. So we will just cook those almost all the way which is probably gonna take about 20, 25 minutes or so. But of course that depends on the size. So we won't go so much by time as we will go by the old, old polka polka. And when we feel those are like 95% of the way, we'll go ahead and reduce our heat to low and add our meat back in. And we'll try to nestle it down in that broth without crushing too many of our veggies. Although you know what, a little bit of crushed potato and carrot would not be the worst thing for that broth since it will actually add a little bit of body to it. And that's it, once our pot's been re-beefed, 
We will simply cover that back up and let it cook for about 15 minutes on low. Or until our veggies are perfect and our meat's heated through. So that's what I did. And about 15 minutes later, my kimchi corned beef looked a little something like this. Which brought me to my big moment of truth. The testing of the broth. So I went ahead and grabbed a spoon and gave this a taste. Terrified it was going to be way too spicy and salty. But I'm happy to report it wasn't. It was right up to that edge, but it did not go over. But if it was, all I was going to do was add a couple cups of water and let it simmer for about another 10 minutes or so to dilute the mixture. So that is definitely something you're going to have to check for. I mean, you are after all the moth man of your broth man. So depending on how salty your beef was, you may have to adjust. But like I said, I thought mine was fine. So I went ahead and proceeded to slice this and serve it up. And above and beyond the salt variable, I was also concerned slash curious about how this beef was going to come out, since I did use the round, which is way, way leaner than your typical brisket. But all it took was trying this one little sample slice, and all my fears faded away, since in addition to being insanely flavorful, it was also very moist and tender. So I went ahead and sliced off a few more pieces, and served those on and in a big bowl of our braised vegetables. And of course we're going to want to finish that off with another spoon or two of our fire water, which is what I decided to call this broth. And then last but not least, we will garnish with some green onions. And as usual, don't try to arrange these. Just scatter those over naturally, since that's always going to look best. Unless there's one spot you miss where you really want a piece of green onion. Which in that case, go ahead and place one down. And that's it. My kimchi corned beef is done and ready to enjoy. So let me grab a fork and knife and go in for the official taste. And yes, going for a piece of celery on the first bite was a bold choice. But despite trying this with only the third best vegetable, it really was amazing. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but as good as the meat was, those kimchi braised vegetables were just as good. In fact, I think I might have broke a record in this video for most vegetables eaten compared to the amount of meat. So if you're working on the Food Wishes trivia game, there you go. But anyway, as far as experiments go, this really was highly successful. So even though I may tweak a few things here and there next time, I really was thrilled with how this came out. Although, Remember all those whole spices I left on the surface? In the end, I did enjoy the flavor they imparted. But every once in a while, I would bite into a piece of bay leaf or juniper berry. So what I might do next time is scrape those spices onto some cheesecloth and tie it up into a satchel and place it in a broth like that so we can go ahead and pull it out later. But anyway, let me go ahead and take one last bite. And since I still hadn't tasted a piece of that kimchi cabbage, I made up for it by taking way too big of a bite. Which, by the way, was incredible. So if you are someone that partakes in the annual tradition of boiling the corned beef, I really do hope you give this new and very exciting alternative a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.